it is good to be here today. Amen. And um, most weeks, I, I don't struggle with what to preach or what to speak on, and and um, but for whatever reason, man, I'm just I'm battling right now. And um, I've actually got three sermons up here. I, I really do, guys. You guys think I'm joking? I've got my notes here. I've got another set of notes right here. And I've got another set of notes in the back of my Bible, and um, just struggling with with what to speak on. And but as I was listening to Danny Lynn sing, and and um, the Lord, it's not even one of the three that I've already got up here. And so, <laughs> so I thought, okay, good luck there, Pastor. And um, and and the Lord just took me to First Peter chapter four. And, um, and, I, and I think this is relevant for what we're dealing with today with this coronavirus. And, and guys, let me just say this, too. It's, it's not just a coronavirus that we're dealing with, guys. And that, that just seems to be the center of our attention as we think about what's going on in the world right now. But I know a lot of people are struggling today with why is all this going on? And, and they're looking for answers and they're looking for solutions. And they're, they're trying to figure this all out. And... Number one, we can never, we will never figure out God, amen? amen. And so quit trying if you are, because you'll never do it. I, I've, I've been with my wife for 30 years, and I don't have her figured out, so it makes me think I'm going to figure God out. But we, we have to, again, remind ourselves of who is in control. I, I told my wife this week, I said, I just think it's ironic, not really ironic, I mean, I laugh, I kind of chuckle that my sermon last week was the God of the impossible. And then this virus shows up. And the, the unsaved world, and even Christians alike, are in panic mode right now. Not everybody. I've, I've, I told Ron, I've never been in panic mode this, this whole week. She's, I don't know how my wife's here. She won't lie much. How many times she has asked me if I was concerned. Are you worried? And 100% of the time, I've said, nope. I'm just not. And I'm not concerned because I know who's in control. And what happens is we, we, come, we become concerned with situations in our life when we try to control the situation in our life. And so when we do that, worry sets in. And I love the Apostle Paul words in Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 and 7 we always quote verse 6 but we never quote verse number 7 and again Paul reminds us be careful for nothing but in all things through what prayer and supplication everybody say with thanksgiving how many of y'all said thank you Lord for the coronavirus this week some school teachers did <laughs> they're like we got three weeks school off with thanksgiving, doing what? Making your requests known unto who? Unto God. But then verse number 7 reminds us that he is, and, and, and when you do that, that the peace of God, which passes all understanding. How many of you are struggling with having peace in your life today? We've studied this topic of prayer for the last eight weeks now, and, and, and I hope that you've gotten it. I hope that you realize that there's so much power in prayer, and, and I hope you believe today that, that our God can stop this coronavirus dead in its tracks. He can make this thing go away right now if he sees fit. I believe that everything happens for a reason. I, I just do. You can't convince me otherwise. I believe that everything that happens in our world, now again, I do not believe that, that God sent the coronavirus. He allowed it to happen. Now, there's a big difference between God sending something or doing this and God just allowing it. Again, could God have stopped this over in China? Yes, he's God. He's all-powerful. He's all-knowing. He's, all, he's all everywhere at all times. He could have stopped this. At, and by the way, he, he still can't stop it, and I believe that he's going to. I just, I just do. But as that's going on, what I want to try to convey to you guys and to those that are watching by live stream 
is to really encourage you, number one, to quit living in fear. When we sang that song, Raise a Hallelujah, you know what my favorite part of that entire song is? Fear you've lost your hold on me. As children of God, listen to me, we have nothing to fear. Paul told young Timothy, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of what? Power and of love and of a sound mind. So if God has not given us the spirit of fear, where does fear come from? The enemy. And guys, here's what I know about the enemy. If he can get the church to live in fear, amen? Number one, when you are living in fear, who's the last person you're going to trust? You're not going to trust God. Because you're living in fear and you're trusting in your fear and your, and your circumstances and, and what's going on in the world. Guys, here's what I understand. I have, listen to me, this much control over the coronavirus. And guess how much control you have over it? The same. So with that being said, quit living in fear. And through this time, become even more dependent on God. I can promise you this, he didn't fall off his throne this morning. He didn't, I mean, we didn't rise up and God was saying, wow, well, I sure didn't see that coming in America. I didn't see the church freaking out. I didn't see the world in utter chaos. No, guys, he knew this was going to happen. And guys, here's what I know about times of adversity. We go through adverse times many times to draw us closer to God. And what, what, what we're seeing in 1 Peter 4, guys, and, and I, I will not be long this morning, I promise you. Verse number 12. Listen to the words. He says, Beloved, think it not strange <laughs> concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. If I was to paraphrase that today, here's what Peter's trying to convey. Quit freaking out, acting like this is the you're the only person going through this and, and that God didn't see this coming. But there's another verse. Because again, if you notice at the end of verse number 12, there's a colon. He says, don't think it's strange concerning this fiery trial that you're going through as some strange thing happened. But do what? Rejoice. Guys, you know what the church needs to be doing through this time? Rejoicing in knowing that even through this national crisis that we are in, that many people believe that we are in right now, guess what? The world is looking at the church to see how we are going to respond in a time of crisis. Listen to me, church. People are looking for answers right now. And let me just tell you, 6,000 years ago, there was a virus a whole lot worse than the coronavirus that's stricken the world, and it's called sin. An infectious disease showed up 6,000 years ago, and the answer to that back then is the same answer today. The only resolution and answer to all of life's problems is found in one person, and his name is Jesus. So now the time is not to run from God, but to run to God. Not to be walking around asking why this is happening, but trusting God through what's happening. Guys, my, my, my faith has not wavered one time through this. And I don't say that to be proud or boast or to act like I'm more spiritual, I've got greater faith than you. No. I just trust God.
And the worst that can happen to a believer if it does become worse is we end up in heaven. <laughs> Amen? And I don't think anybody here today is struggling with the fact that, you know what? Yeah, it's going to get a whole lot better for me. You think people are freaking out now? What do you think is going to happen when the rapture occurs? <laughs> Honestly, guys, if we think the world is, is in chaos right now, what are they going to do when the church is out of here? By the way, it's coming very soon. You don't believe me? Look at the world around us, guys, and what's happening. And then read Matthew 24. 70 degrees one day and snow the next. Many antichrists are going to show up in the last days. Perilous times shall come. Men will be lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. Proud, boast, boasters. Guys, again, we're seeing all the end time stuff happening right now. Guys, I love this book. We are literally watching and reading this book, and it's like a movie. We are watching the events unfold right before our very eyes. So why are we freaking out over a coronavirus? Guys, I'm not saying that we become stupid during this time and that we drop our guard and we don't take the necessary precaution. I am not saying that. What I am saying today is don't live in fear. Trust God. The last time I checked, back in the book of Exodus, he parted the Red Sea and the children of Israel marched over on dry ground. And they had to see a pretty cool aquarium on their way over. Take that Newport Aquarium. As we saw last week, God made the earth stand still for 24 hours. He made the earth go back 10 degrees. He destroyed 450 prophets of Baal. Guys, God is still in control. That hasn't changed since last Sunday. The sermon you heard last week about the God of the impossible, guess what? He's still the God of the impossible. So don't think that this, is, that this is something that God didn't know about. That this shocked God. It didn't. Again, I'm not making light of the situation, guys. I don't want you to leave here thinking, man, Pastor just is making light of this. No, I'm not. I'm taking this very seriously because it is severely contagious. But again, I'm not going to freak out about it. I'm not going to lose sleep over the coronavirus. I've lost sleep over how to handle the situation, but I've not lost sleep over the coronavirus. Because I want to make decisions that make 100% of people happy. I can't make 100% of the people in my house happy. Yeah, yeah. I'm not even, you know who that was. You don't even need to know. I don't even have to tell you who it was. His initials are Micah Smith. <laughs> so, guys, here's what I want to encourage you with today. Number one, check up on each other. Here's one of the things I believe why this is happening so that the church will be the church. You know how many one another commands there are in the word of God? No less than 15. Encourage one another. Pray for one another. Bear one another's burdens. Exhort one another. Love one another. Pray for one another. Guys, those are all in the Bible. They're not suggestions. So again, if you want to know how do we get through this and what are, what are the steps, start right there. Love your neighbors yourself. You know how you can show love to your neighbor? Ask them how you can be a blessing to them. 
Go knock on her door and say, listen, Kate, how can I help you? Do you need anything? Guys, I've been absolutely blessed as your pastor this week, even through as, as difficult it has been this week and, you know, just physically, emotionally, spiritually, just everything draining this week. I was in bed at 8 o'clock last night. Actually, it might have been even earlier than that. I didn't even square dance. I was so tired. Miss Betty came in this morning, asked how I was doing, to make sure I was taking the B complex that she gave me. The big 55 gallon drum that she brought me in a couple weeks ago. <laughs> she just wants to make sure that her pastor's taking care of himself. And I so appreciate that. But I've been blessed by, by again, Pastor, just thank you for being our leader and, and take, making the right steps and doing the, trying to do the right things. And, and listen, we know that it's not easy for you. And just the words of encouragement, guys, and that has gone a long way in my life this week. But also to see people calling me and saying, hey, Pastor, listen, can you give me the phone numbers to our seniors in our church? Because we wanted to go to the grocery store for them, and we want to pick things up for them, and we want to call them, and this, that, and the other. So I've done it. I've given them the list of phone numbers. So seniors be expecting a call from some of our church people this week. And listen to me, seniors. As your pastor, let them know that you have a need, okay? Don't say, no, we're good when your refrigerator is empty and your cabinets are empty. They want to be a blessing to you. So encourage one another. Check up on one another. Pray for one another. Guys, listen, I know we're freaking out about, man, I can't touch anybody and I can't shake hands and I can't do this and I can't do that. And, and I get it. I mean, I really do. But there's nothing wrong with you putting your arm around a loved one and just praying for them. Guys, it's time for the church again to be the church. Some people say, well, Pastor, the timing of this thing is just, just bad with Easter coming up. I said, no, it's not. Is God's timing ever bad, church? <laughs> and again, that, to me, that's just foolish that we think that way. His timing is never bad. I believe, honestly, guys, that we are going to have the best Easter service we have ever had at First Baptist Church of Trenton this year. I do. And here's why. We are going to have people here that are looking for answers. And what better place to get the answer than the church? Because guess, guess who they're going to hear about on Easter Sunday? Y'all know your pastor, don't you? They're not going to hear about Buddha. They're not going to hear about Allah. They're not going to hear about any other God that can do absolutely nothing for them. They're going to be, they're going to hear about the only one who can do anything and everything in their life, and that's Christ. So church, think it not strange. As some strange thing happens but rejoice. And again, you can read the rest of that passage, and again, I know people say, well, you, you took it out of its context, and that's fine, and I just want to give you a principle, a life principle, that when we're going through a lifetime of adversity, that we can rejoice. So here's what we're going to do right now before I ask Brother Tim to come back up. I want you guys to share right now has God been good to you this week? Okay. I don't want to hear just amen. I, I want to know how God, how's God been good to you. Barb, I know how God's been good to you, but share with everybody else. Zoe was tasked before, which she gets her new one. She'll really be scooting through this church. For now. We're going to rewire that thing. 
needs more power. Who else? God's been good to you this week. Lori? say this too, guys, about adversity. Adversity comes in our lives, again, for two reasons. Number one, for us to become more dependent on Him. And number two, so that He and He alone received all the glory. When you get through that adversity. Because you watch Him and you see Him and you see what He does through your times of adversity. And you can't help but give glory to the one that got you through it. He's worthy, Amen. Who else? God's been good to you this week. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Amen. Amen. Ken? boys they came out of their rooms anybody else guys just real quick Mandy yeah <laughs> took us like four weeks to find out what sex it was but I'm just kidding so congratulations to the pro shows and, and um, so are you guys still going to California or no Okay. <laughs>
That was Leon, if anybody was wondering where that other little voice came from. So, <laughs> Okay. One more. Anybody want one more? God's been good to you this week. Scott. good man that's good that's good that's good well guys we're going to do something just different and um you know i'm going to ask tim to come back in the praise team i want to sing raise a hallelujah one more time and i I think we need to do that so i think that's what we need to do during this time of adversity is sing a little louder amen Raise a hallelujah a little louder. You know, let our praises roar. Amen. Rejoice during this time, knowing that God's still on his throne. This will be our closing of our service. Um, And so after we sing, the ushers will be at the back doors with the offering plates. And um, so if you enjoyed the service today, give. Even if you didn't enjoy it, give. I'm just kidding. Be praying for the ones who could not be here today, please. I know they would appreciate it. Those of you, are we still on or no? I just want to tell you all I love you and praying for you. And um, please let us know your prayer requests. If you guys have those, um, we would be more than happy to pray for those. So let's all stand. Let's sing, raise a hallelujah one more time. That'll be our dismissal. Uh, ministry team leaders don't forget immediately after the service this morning we'll go meet in the gym um, air high five somebody after the service or air handshake somebody after the service church family listen i love you guys and please 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 if there's anything that we can do to help you please do not hesitate to call us okay we do have a small food pantry here in our church so if, if food is an issue we even have toilet paper here I hope the live stream was cut off on that. <laughs> so, if, and, and I know we say that jokingly, but guys, we do have stuff here that if you guys have a need, please reach out to us so that we can be a blessing to you. I love you guys, and like I said, after the song, we will be dismissed.